Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. We're here at Volkswagen of North Tampa, and guess what? Today is that day that you've been waiting for. We have it. It's the 2022 totally redesigned Volkswagen GTI. But before we get into the all original hot hatch, let's talk about what's going on here. Volkswagen. They've been around since the 1930s, if you could believe that. Of course, when people think VW, they think of the iconic Beetle and Volkswagen Bug, but you know what? The Volkswagen Golf is one of those vehicles that's been around for decades and really has been more of an evolution rather than a revolution. No matter which way you see a new or old Volkswagen Golf, you know that it is that vehicle based off of the shape and the philosophy behind it. Now, the GTI first appeared in Europe all the way back in 1976. It took a few years to get it to the shores here in the United States in the 1980s, but you know what? That GTI has been that mainstay for people who want that hot hatch, fun driving action. Now, it's been a while since we've had a redesign. There was a Mark 7 and a Mark 7.5. This Mark 8 is taking that MQB chassis to the next level, not only when it comes to handling, not only when it comes to driving characteristics, but guess what? We have more horsepower underneath the hood. But what I want to find out is, this is a front wheel drive. It's been front wheel drive since day one. There's another front wheel drive hot hatch out there that's been making a lot of headlines. It's that mighty Honda Civic Type R. I want to find out, has Volkswagen made the right changes? Have they made enough changes for this to be the hotter hatch, the better hatch, compared to the Honda Civic Type R? Let's dive into our beautiful, sparkling Volkswagen Mark 8 and find out. Now, right off the bat, you're going to notice that this is the Autobahn trim. That's going to be your top trim with all the goodies. Starting at the front of the business, I love the direction that they've gone with the headlight design. So you're going to have your LED turn signals, LED daytime running lamps, and those projector beam style headlights. A little bit of silver, but I really love the shape and how the front fascia kind of follows the design of the actual headlight housing. Now, working your way down, you do have functionality in this lower corner area because you'll notice the very artistic, detailed way of putting the LED fog lamps in that lower corner area. A little bit of flat black around the edge. And you know what? I was going to zonk this area. We're just going to give it a half zonk. I wish that it did have some aerodynamic flow to it but at least they put the fog lamps in it and i love the way they went out of the box you know stepped outside the boundaries of design and gave us something very very unique now as we come across the front of course you're going to get that red trim and let me know what you think i kind of liked on the previous generation how they took the red trim and made it flow into the headlight housing but they have the red trim it's been there since day one you got your daytime running lamps turn singles, extra lighting, and that iconic Volkswagen badge, the people's car with the GTI badge, that takes it to the next level. Takes the Golf platform to the next level. Of course, there's a Golf R with all-wheel drive, but many are saying, and we're gonna find out with our on-throttle drive, that this is actually the more fun GTI Volkswagen to drive compared to the Golf R. Now on the lower end, that's where you're gonna see more of that great design. Flat black is gonna take a great beating. You do have functionality with that massive intercooler peeking behind because like I said, we have more horsepower for 2022. Now when we get up onto the hood, familiar clean lines. I love the way it just rises up. Everything goes towards the windshield. The rest goes right towards the A pillars and it is that true evolution of the Golf. Now, as we come around the bend, what are we working with? Wheel and tire setup on our Autobahn trim, which remember, you get three trims, S, SE, and Autobahn. Check out the wheels. I love what they've done. The gloss black, the machine aluminum, it's got a nice twisting action to it. It's a 19 inch wheel. Up front, you're gonna find those two 35s on the width, nice rubber band-esque sidewall there all the way around nice 30 series sidewall and then of course you're going to get those bright red calipers looking good it's not a six piston brembo or anything like that we're going to find out how effective they are but when we're talking rotors you got over 13 inch rotors up front fully ventilated and on this autobahn trim the suspension is that dcc adaptive dampers all four corners 
love the style with our particular color. I'm calling this color mellow yellow, man, because it's really a cool color to behold in the sun. Of course, when it comes to body lines, everything is clean. I like the way they brought the GTI badge, kept it on the fender, a little bit of red to blend it in with what's going on at the front. We do have the color match on the mirror caps, LED turn signals in those mirror caps, and then you'll notice the flat black lower sill that is unique to the GTI, really gives it that sporty extra arrow look to it. Color match door handles. We have an oversized sunroof. The one thing I wish they would have done is blacked out the whole top. So I am going to zonk that, but I do like the oversized sunroof. They painted black here. How about paint this rear area black, especially with the black shark fin antenna. But the silhouette of this car is that familiar shape. Even though it's a redesign, that hot hat shape really has withstood the test of time. Plus, wait until you see the usability. As we come towards the rear, we went with that nice angle on the opening for your fuel filler door and then coming around the back just like up front they did a great job led taillights volkswagen's always done a great job with the way they designed the taillights you got a nice low roof spoiler with a kick up to it the one thing that i am going to zonk is the wiper it'd be nice to kind of tuck it underneath and just clean up the rear glass but you know what they did a great job cleaning everything else up you got your volkswagen badge this also acts as your handle to open up the rear hatch. Just simple GTI, nothing else. And then you're going to have your one exhaust pipe on each side with that polished tip. But you know what? It's not just about how it looks. Let's check out how it's going to sound. Let's pop the hood and see what's powering our new GTI. Right, guys, we got the hood open to the all new GTI. Underneath the hood, we do have a prop rod. It's been there since day one. So we're not going to zonk that, but definitely not going to zonk what's happening horsepower wise. Now, when you look at the engine cover, it is a little bland. It would be nice if there was a Volkswagen badge on it, maybe even a GTI badge, maybe even a splash of red, since red is synonymous with the GTI. But what are we looking at on our Autobahn edition? We're looking at a two liter inline four turbocharged engine now producing 241 horsepower. That's 13 more horsepower than the Mark 7 and Mark 7.5. 273 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to a seven-speed DCT. Remember, Volkswagen calls that a DSG transmission. It's nothing different. It's just a different name that they call their DCT. Here's the fun th news. It's got an active limited slip diff, that's standard, with launch control and the seven-speed DCT. You're looking zero to 60 in about five seconds flat. Quarter mile is going to go by at 13.5 seconds at 106 miles an hour. Top speed is 155 miles an hour. Now, this little hot hatch weighs 3,154 pounds. MPGs, 24 in the city, 32 on the highway. And like I said, we got those DCC active dampers, all four corners, updated chassis. Now, when we're comparing this to the Type R, guess what? We have not as much horsepower as the Type R, but you can't get a seven-speed DCT in the Type R or launch control. But while we go ahead, let's fire up our Volkswagen GTI and hear what it sounds like. guys we're inside the original hot hatch and it's been redesigned for 2022 the mark 8 gti i know you're saying to yourself well joe i've been waiting for this redesign i've been really in love with the gti i had one many years ago the civic type r just it hasn't really been for me but i'm liking what the new 2022 mark 8 is all about but how much is it so this autobahn trim which remember is the top trim s s e and then Autobahn, the way that it's optioned is right at an MSRP of $40,899. Let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. Love the clean German Euro styling. Soft touch material up top, a little bit of silver on the door handle, but the great news is no gloss black. I'm even liking the design that they did in the middle area there. Not really meant to look like carbon fiber, but it looks like something different and I like it. Soft touch material on the armrest, 
door pocket has some felt lining, so the great news is you could put a couple Bavarian pretzels in there and you're not gonna scratch any of the salt off. Plus, there's plenty of room for a bottle of Yoohoo to wash it all down. Now, going from the door panel to the dash, same story. Soft touch material, the Autobahn trim comes with the full Harman Kardon sound system. There's that nice stylish trim I was telling you about. And if you look very, very closely, you'll see the ambient lighting that's lurking in between the two sections of the dash. The way they integrated the AC vents, very, very clean. And then guess what? We have an all new infotainment system. So over 10 inches of info system display. There is a bit of gloss black, but the great news is a lot of the screen is taken up and look at the hand gestures. So I could actually swipe left to right and have the different functions come up. See how it came up? And then back, there you go. So you're gonna have your navigation, your Apple CarPlay, your Android Auto, ventilated seats and heated seats. But wait, there's a lot more going on here. If you hit your main screen, you can see how you bring up the four separate screens. We go into vehicle, and this is where things get interesting. You could turn on and off your start-stop feature, uh, feature for the vehicle. You could check on your tire pressure, whatever you need. And what I love are the graphics. Super, super clean. We could go inside. Well, we're outside, but we could go to the interior. That's where you could adjust your head-up head up display. You could go into your different cockpit settings, which are wonderful. And then the interior lighting is where you can make all those different adjustments. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and plenty of graphics. Look at that, nice swipe features, clear, smooth. There's no actual physical button. So let me know how you think about that when it comes to a lot of the adjustments are gonna be done through the screen, or if you notice, they do have the ability to tap here and you could adjust your audio, you could adjust your temperature by touching on this panel down below. Now let me go ahead and throw it in the reverse. There we are, backup camera, nice clear resolution, plus you're going to have that sensory protection all the way around. Put it back into park, and then I actually just shut the engine off to let you know that guess what? It says goodbye. And then we're going to fire it right back up. Look at that, it brings you right back to where we started. Go back in. How about modes? You could actually make adjustments here in this middle area to the infotainment system, we go into modes. There's our different mode settings, eco, comfort, sport, and custom. We're staying in full sport mode. You got the racetrack, that's what we're all about. Let's continue our journey. Wireless charging, nice large cubby here for the big phones. Get them charged up and some ambient lighting. We do have a Slim Jim holder, holds up the two Slim Jims. And then here is your new way of getting through the seven speed DCT, that DSG transmission. Kind of looks a little interesting because it's like a little nub, but the nice news is it's all flat black around it. I do like the silver trim. And then working our way back, you get two cup holders, but watch this. Let's say you have one of those little skinny but tall bottles and you don't want it bouncing around, ba bam Now you actually can lock and have it loaded and it's not gonna slide all over the place. Key fob. New for 2022, looking classy with the silver. There's your buttons on the back. We do have a 12 volt soft material on the armrest with the red stitching. The nice thing is you could put it here. You could put it back here. You could kind of put it in the middle. You could extend it back out. And when it comes to opening it, you could probably put about, I would say eight golf balls in there. Get them all, get your balls polished up. You'll put them in there. There's some felt lining. Plus, it's a ratcheting armrest. I don't love ratcheting armrests, but maybe you want to have your elbow here as you're going down the road, looking good, people looking at you, and then you just ratchet it right back. Seats, though, is the cherry on top of this GTI Sunday. Love the gray, the black finishes, nice bolstering, nothing too crazy when it comes to the bolstering, but it's going to hold you in place. An improvement over the previous gen seats, there's manual bottom, electric back, Kind of weird that they did that, especially on the Autobahn, but here's that wonderful sunroof. I was showing you on the outside, get your vitamin D. I'm six feet tall and the great news is you could have even taller people in here and they got plenty of room. But why don't you come over here? I wanna show you behind this beautiful flat bottom leather wrap steering wheel in our all new GTI. All right guys, here we are, business time. Like you've noticed from other previous generations, Volkswagen does a thing with the GTI compared to the other hot hatches where the level of fit feel and finish 
is that much higher. And it all starts with the pedal box. They do a great job with the amount of room, nice large aluminum dead pedal, brake pedal and throttle. Of course, you could still get that six speed manual with the third pedal and that's the way I would spec mine, but you get great electric seat controls, including the lower lumbar on the driver's side. And you're gonna of course have three memory seat settings. The space is great. The leather is even better. Nice quality, perforated on the sides, flat bottom racer-esque to the overall design. Little bit of red taken from the exterior, that GTI name with the gloss black, the silver looking slick. You do have paddles on the back of the steering wheel. They are on the small side, so I am gonna have to zonk that, but it allows you to go up and down that seven speed DCT, manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel, head up display, but the great news is that nice large digital dash Love the graphics, love the fonts, and then watch this. You could actually change the different gauges to the left and the right of the main display. So I could come down here, put my G meter, read your and record your G forces as you're going through the twisty bits, or we could go back in and change it to something else. Maybe you wanna have your acceleration there, but I wanna have the G meter there. I think that really is gonna be a great way to set it up, but you know what? Up front is awesome, lots of room. Let's see how your passengers are gonna like living in this hot hatch with you. All right guys, backseat time in this all new GTI. Now what's great is, is you're gonna get the same awesome amount of room in here. I mean, it's crazy to think six feet tall, but yet I'm not even close to the headliner in here. And this is a compact car, but let's look at the back of the seats. I love the way they did these one piece backs. And if you notice, you actually have two pockets up top and one larger pocket down below, enough space here to put at least four slices of German chocolate cake. And here's the fun fact, German chocolate cake is actually not from Germany. The guy who came up with it, his last name was German, and that's why they call it German chocolate cake. Who would have thunk it? But if you're wondering what are those pockets really meant for, check it out. You could put your cell phone there, have it nice and easy to get to, but I like the German chocolate cake better, especially on those longer road trips. Now, you do have a nice little command center in here with rear AC vents. You can adjust the temperature and way down below are two USB-Cs, so you'll be able to keep your phones charged for all the action. Like I said, plenty of leg room, feeling great, and then on top of that, pull this bad boy down and you have a decent size armrest, just enough room for an arm so we don't have to worry about zonking it put it back up, but you know what? They call this a hot hatch. Hot hatches and hatchbacks are supposed to be versatile. Let's get in that cargo area and see what we could haul in the new GTI. Right, guys, time to get into that hatchback area. This is a hot hatch. Of course, that's what makes it so versatile. You just lift right up, nice, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And in the back, you're gonna find yourself 20 cubic feet of space with the rear seats up. You do have a nice little nook over here on the driver's side for that small box of Twinkies. This is almost the color of a plutonium Twinkie. And then on the passenger side, there is a 12 volt up in the corner. That makes it very usable. And then really the biggest news is go do your Costco run because you just push the buttons and you can flip down the seats so easily. One, two, three, look at all that room you have, nice, flat area for that big old box of Oreos at Costco. And then the even better news is, in a day and age where on your Type R, you're not gonna get a spare, you actually get a spare on your GTI. But you know what? Let's go ahead. This is a hot hatch. I wanna find out how hot it is. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go on throttle in our 2022 GTI. All right, guys, we're in the all new 2022 Volkswagen GTI. We left Volkswagen of North Tampa and we are going to get ready to do some on throttle here. I'm going to leave it in auto shift mode from a dead stop. On throttle, here we go, yeah! <laughs> nice! Love the sound. telling you, you're definitely going to feel the extra 18 horsepower in this redesigned Mark 8. It's interesting because sitting here, it feels familiar, but it also feels new. And that's what I like about it. Now, I know there's been a lot of auto journalists 
who have complained about the controls, specifically things like climate and radio without having physical knobs. You know, at first I was a little worried. It actually isn't too bad. I think the one thing that is probably gonna annoy a lot of people is it's hard to fine tune things. Like when you want your blower fan speed to be just perfect to where it's not, you're not in a wind tunnel, but you're also getting enough air to keep it cool or keep you warm. It's hard to fine tune things, but once you figure out how to use the system, it's actually very intuitive to be honest with you. I love having the nice large digital dash and the seats are some of my favorite. And when you're comparing this to the Civic Type R, you just feel, everything in here feels higher level. That's for sure. Now Civic Type R does have more horsepower, but remember you can't get any kind of DCT transmission. It's only the six speed manual. What I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna shift with the paddles. You get a nice large gear indicator. And I'm really digging the sound too. Obviously it being pumped into the cabin, but I think the way they did the sound, it doesn't seem too over the top uh, where you just know that it's fake. I think they really did a great job kind of encompassing what the environment should be for a GTI. Visibility, just like previous generations, is spot on the money. Side mirrors are great. It's a little gloss black heavy, especially around the digital instrumentation, but the way the colors and the graphics and the fonts are, are really, really well done. And I like the way you could change what is actually displayed while you're driving. So that's great. And it's easy to figure out. Steering wheel has a nice feel, nice thickness to it. And the way the seven speed downshifts, I mean, it's very, very smooth. And when you go on throttle, wow, it actually puts you back in the seat compared to the previous generation, the Mark 7. You definitely feel on that extra rush of boost. Now, the great news is being front wheel drive, it is going to be lighter than the Golf R. The bad news is you don't have the all wheel drive, but you do have that active limited slip diff to help you get the power to the ground. And I'm so happy that they just made it standard instead of making it an option on a trim or something like that. Paddles are a little on the small side, just like before. Would be nice if they were a little larger and also um, if they were made out of metal would be a nice nice overall touch. But if you're ready, I'm ready. On throw, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking traction a little bit. On the brakes, here we go. Let's see how it feels. Nice down, woohoo, wow. Turning is phenomenal. Look at this. Loving it. I'm telling you right now. Now, if you ask somebody at VW, they say they have eliminated understeer. I'm not so sure about that. I mean, we're just driving it on the road. I would like to take this to a track to really be able to find the limits. But I'm telling you right now, compared to previous generation, turn in is very nice and crisp and i like the way the rear kind of rotates a little bit to give you that corner exit out of the turn to where you really could carry the speed that's where it's showing all that engineering between the mark 8 and the mark 7 and a half or 7.5 but the downshifts are great i mean look at this really grips the road nice now, of course, the Type R comes with those super sticky track specific focus tires. So you're, you're not gonna have as much grip as the Type R, but it would be interesting to put this on equal tire footing with the Type R. Another thing is with the Type R, you got those 20 inch wheels with the ultra thin sidewall tires. These being 19 inch are gonna be more livable on a day to day basis for sure. All right, here we go. On throttle, yeah! <laughs> Puts a smile on your face. Look at this, downshift's nice. Look at the way the turn in. Oh my God. For a front wheel drive car, I'm telling you, they've done one heck of a job on this thing. Wow. Now the one thing I am noticing that just happened there, I came out of the turn and I saw a sign come up on the screen saying, 
steering wheel heating is on, I don't want that. It was accidentally touched and that would be something that if you're going through the twisty bit, you gotta be careful where you're putting your palms on this, but uh, still the steering wheel has a great shape to it and definitely great feedback. But let's go again. Oh, bro, here we go. On the brakes. Nice stable on the brakes too. Look at this. Wow, turning. Decreasing radius. Understeer was very limited there. Nice, look at that. <laughs> Get a little bit of a pop when I shifted. So definitely the sound, it sounds better than the previous generation. And you definitely can feel the extra horsepower. That's for sure. All right, guys, here we go, pulling out. I'm gonna put it in back in automatic mode. On throttle, here we go. Down shifts and we're off. On the brakes. Look at that. The feedback, the usability, I mean, it's crazy just how versatile of a vehicle that this really is. They really have gone through and elevated a lot of the features. It's going to be a mixed bag what people think about the infotainment side of things. It does clean up the whole interior but I would like some physical knobs. You got plenty of USBs up front, USB-Cs, and the wireless charging, which is great, but just uh, would be nice to actually have some physical buttons and knobs in here. All right, guys, one more time for me, one more time for you. On the throttle, here we go. Nice. On the brakes. <laughs> this is fun. That's what's so great about this car. There we go. Nice, I'm telling you, they did a great job. The sound ending in here is perfect. You're not getting a bunch of road noise. Wind noise is very, very, very limited. Obviously with the Harman Kardon sound system, you're gonna get those nice clear tunes. And then having the new technology, ventilated seats, heated seats, heated steering wheel, it's definitely a hot hatch continuation, raised to the next level. It's gonna be curious how people compare this to the Type R, Elantra, N, and the rest of those performance compact vehicles. But we're gonna get back to Volkswagen of North Tampa and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been one heck of a day here at Volkswagen of North Tampa. Definitely gotta thank Zadie, Christina, and the rest of the team for allowing Radies Rides access to their very first totally redesigned Mark 8 GTI. Let me know what you think. Has Volkswagen done enough to their front wheel drive hot hatch to make this the better buy over the Honda Civic Type R? Put it in the comment section. I'm dying to know which way you would go, but if you wanna keep seeing vehicles like these and you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click that link in the description. Get yourself some Radies Rise merch. Got to give it up to the hottest, hardest working videographer in all of YouTube. Literally the hottest because it is very, very sweaty out here today. Thank you, Lori, for putting the muscle in behind the lens. Show her some love in the comment section. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.